You know, sometimes it can actually be really easy to come up with some very interesting math equations. For example, this one right here. But I didn't come up with this, one of my viewers did, so thank you so much. But let's look at the structure of this equation first. What makes this interesting is because it looks like an identity, meaning that it looks like it's always true. But you know it, this is not the case. However, this is an equation that we will actually be able to find some x values that can make this true. So, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and pause the video and try this equation first. Done? Cool. At first, when I saw this right here, it looks like, hmm, the answer is just some like crazy numbers, right? No close forms, no nice answers. But I entered this on Wolf on Alpha. I saw the answers. They were actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, we see we have 1 over tangent x. Let's rewrite that as cotangent. So cotx. And now if you look at this right here, we have what? Cotangent. Have you ever wondered what does the co mean, the prefix co? This right here actually represents what? Complementary. Nah, complementary. It doesn't mean like, oh, are you getting like a hotel room for free, that kind of complementary, no. Or are you getting a, um, you know. This means what? This means in the trigonometric world, when you have two angles, if they add up to be 90 degrees, they are complementary angles, all right? But the deal is that we are all adults now, so we are not going to be using 90 degrees. We'll say pi over 2. Anyway, though, so let's keep the left-hand side. We still have tangent of 1 over x. That's okay. But once we know this idea, what we can do is the following. Just get rid of the word co, and then just put down tangent. But you see here, the input is x. Well, if this input here and that input together add up to be pi over 2, then they are complementary angles. So this input now, I will just enter it as pi over 2 minus x. Right? So this is actually an identity. Cotangent x is equal to tangent of pi over 2 minus x. Why is this true? Because it's actually on my board right here. So yeah, I know it's for sure true. Now this is so cool because on the left hand side we have tangent, on the right hand side we have tangent. So it means that this must be equal to that, huh? So it means that we must have 1 over x being equal to pi over 2 minus x, right? Yes, but this is only going to give us two answers. Why two? Because you will see that this is actually a quadratic equation. Yeah, good. But the truth is we have infinitely many answers for this equation. No, don't worry, I'll show you guys how to do it. When we have the left-hand side and right-hand side, we have tangent already. Yes, we can just put the inside equal to each other, but because the period of tangent is pi, so we are just going to add an pi here, and then we will show, denote that n is an integer. And now we can just look at this equation and solve for x, and we will be able to get all the value for x, all the solutions for this equation. Yeah. This right here only works for tangent though. If you want to have something interesting, I will tell you guys another equation to work out for sine. That's tricky here, but I have a video for you guys already, so check that out. But anyway, let's go ahead and solve this. Multiply everybody by x, so that we don't have to deal with the rational that, that anymore. And now, let's do the following. Negative x times x is negative x squared on the right hand side, but I'll put it to the left hand side. So we will have positive x squared right here. And then, perhaps, this and that, let's just combine them because they're just a constant term inside of the parentheses, all right? So let's multiply this by 2 and 2. And um, I will have this and that times x and then move to the left-hand side. So it becomes minus, minus parentheses. And then on the top, let's just factor out the pi. So we have 1 plus 2n, like so. And then we have the pi and then over 2. So that's the coefficient, and then we multiply that by x, and then move to the left-hand side. And then lastly, we have x times 1 over x. It's on the left-hand side already, so that we just plus 1, and this is all equal to pi. So we have a quadratic equation in terms of x, so that's very nice. But before we proceed, let me just tell you guys that if you look at the answer on Wolfram Alpha, you will see that they will have like 1 minus 2n right here, instead of 1 plus 2n. It's okay because n is just an integer, meaning that it can be positive or negative whole number. Or you can also think about it as 
maybe we can just put a plus 2 and pi here so that's why we end up with like a negative sign here right so doesn't matter just don't let that bother you too much and now let's just go ahead and set it up x is equal to negative b so we have all that so negative parentheses all this stuff so negative parentheses 1 plus 2n times pi over 2 and then plus or minus square root and then we have b squared so we have that thing technically with a negative and then 1 plus 2n pi over 2 square and then minus 4 a is 1 and c is also 1 so it's just 1 times 1 and then all over 2a so we just have 2 times 1 cool so that's pretty much it but in the end we should simplify this a little bit so i will just go ahead and do the following for you guys and we'll do everything out here right? so first this times that is positive and then this is the, the little denominator on the top i'm going to put that down below right so i'm just going to write down 1 plus 2 um, pi like so and then next we have the plus or minus and then we have that square root and now check this out two square on the bottom right it's a four so right here what we are going to do is just multiply the bottom by four and then the top by four so now they will have the same denominator inside so we can combine them but square root of four is a two on the bottom so here we have two here we have two together put that on the bottom so 2 times 2 is 4 on the bottom, so the bottom is 4, all right? So that should take care of that. And now we'll just write down the rest. Negative square is positive, and then this thing square, I'm just going to keep it because Wolf and Alpha didn't multiply the out either. And then pi square, and then minus 4 times 4. And then again, all the small denominators were taken care of already. So this right here will be the answer. Of course, for the answer part, that's also denote that n is an integer. So we have infinitely many answers for this beautiful equation. Why is this so beautiful? Again, ah, it looks like a very nice identity, but it's wrong. Yeah. So if you would like to try, here I have some pretty interesting question for you guys. What if we change the tangent to sine? So question number one, sine of 1 over x, try to make it equal to 1 over sine x go ahead and try to see if we can actually solve this i don't know well i do know the answer but i'm not going to tell you you try it and the other one mm, it's this you see how we have tangent tangent and we just put the inside equal to each other and all that right so let's go ahead and do the following what if we have sine x that's equal to sine and then let's say here is something that's a slightly more complicated um let's say 2x this is not too complicated because sine of 2x is just what? 2 sine x times cosine x uh, right here. So we can just use the double angle identity and then continue from there, right? So not, nothing too tricky. I'm going to put a pi right here. Earlier we have the double angle identity, but do we have like a multiple of pi angle identity? I don't think so, right? Try to see how to find out all the solutions for these two equations. I do have a video on this already, so go ahead and try it first. And if you need help, you can check out the video and then let me know what the answers that you guys get. 